Hi guys, welcome to the channel. In this video, you're going to learn the correct pronunciation of 10 words that have a silent W. And you'll also learn a typical expression for each word. If you do find this video helpful, please hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And don't forget to ring the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Let's get started. Answer. We don't say answer, it's answer. Do you know the answer to my question? And a typical expression is to not take no for an answer. And you can see in the picture an example of this. This means to not accept a refusal. To refuse is to say no. I don't want to go skating, but my friends won't take no for an answer. That is, they won't accept the answer no. Sword, not sword. Sword and shield is a binomial pair. It isn't correct to say shield and sword. Um, if you're interested in binomial pairs, I have a couple of videos about these. But as you can see in the example, they're words that have to appear in a specific order, like fish and chips, not chips and fish. Uh, just to be clear, this is the sword and this is the shield. And a typical expression, a double-edged sword. Something both beneficial, that's good, and problematic or bad. His new job is a double-edged sword. The pay's great, but the hours are long. Wrong. So again, silent W. Have you been pronouncing wrong wrongly? Don't get me wrong. This means don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Don't get me wrong. I like her, but she can be a bit annoying sometimes. So we say, don't get me wrong, when we're going to say something negative, but we don't want the other person to be too upset or offended by what we're saying. Wrap, the verb to wrap. I use brown paper to wrap the presents. Present is British English. In American English, they say gift. Under wraps. So you can see from the picture, under wraps means secret, classified or confidential. The couple have been keeping their relationship under wraps. And it's very typical to say keep something under wraps. Keep the project under wraps. Keep the news under wraps. Wrist. The doctor checked my pulse on my wrist. So you can see from the picture, wrist is the body part that joins your hand to your arm. And a typical expression, a slap on the wrist. This is a mild punishment. Mild means not serious. I thought I'd be arrested, but I just got a slap on the wrist. We can see in the picture the police officer is, is speaking with her. He's reprimanding her, telling her maybe not to drive so fast, but there's no serious punishment. So she's getting a slap on the wrist. Wrinkle. As we age, our skin starts to wrinkle. Yep, uh, I'm 40 at the moment and I can see the process starting. It's worth pointing out that wrinkle can be used in more than one way. So we can have wrinkles in our skin, but also wrinkles in clothes. Um, like this shirt and the adjective is wrinkled. The shirt is wrinkled. My shirt is wrinkled. It needs ironing. And you can see there the word ironing also has a silent letter. It's a silent R. So this 
object here is an iron, it's both a noun and a verb. We use the iron to iron our clothes. So if you've heard of the, um, well, more or less superhero, Iron Man, it's not Iron Man, it is Iron Man. And we can quite literally iron out wrinkles in a shirt, for example, but the expression to iron out the wrinkles is used in a figurative sense and it means to resolve all minor problems. So a minor problem is a small problem, something that's not serious. There are a few wrinkles left to iron out before the project is finished. So there are a few problems, small problems left to resolve. Whole. The whole company is at the conference today. So we don't say whole, it's whole. Uh, the whole means all of something. So the whole company, that's everyone in the company, the entire company, or the whole pizza. I was hungry and I ate the whole pizza. That means all the pizza. I didn't share any of it. On the whole. So this means in general or for the most part. On the whole. I think it's a great idea. So you could replace this with in general, generally, for the most part. Whose? Whose wallet is this? Is it yours? I don't know. It's not mine. So whose is the question form for possessives. We want to know who something belongs to. We say, whose is it? Whose bright idea was this? So this means it was a bad idea. Whose bright idea was it to leave the front door unlocked? And you can see in the picture, somebody left the front door unlocked. Somebody broke in and robbed the house. So leaving the front door unlocked was a bad idea. Who? Who will be the British Prime Minister in 10 years time? Who knows? And you can see from the picture there that this means I really don't know. So if we go back to the previous question, who will be the British Prime Minister in 10 years time? Who knows? I have no idea. I don't know. Whom? He lived next door to his cousin, whom he strongly disliked. So whom is an object um, pronoun, basically. So he disliked his cousin. His cousin is the object, the person receiving the action, not the person doing the action. Um, whom is quite formal and the expression that it is used in is also quite formal. To whom it may concern. This means to the right person for this communication. To whom it may concern. I'm writing to apply for da, da, da. so as you can see from the example this is used in formal communication when you don't know the name of the person that you are contacting so if you're sending a job application or a request for information of some kind and you don't know the name of the person that you're contacting you can begin your message with to whom it may concern. For more English tutorials, then take a look at my channel. And if you do like the content, please like and subscribe to see more. See you in the next video.